Nashindwa kueleza e baba e baba e baba What I'm going to share with you this evening Kina naenda kushiriki nanyi ya joni ya leo also happens to be the theme of the next two months pia inafanyika kuwa lengo la miezi miwili i've always been giving the theme of the month on the first sunday of the month mimi huwa napeana lengo jumapili ya kwanza kila mwezi but what i'm sharing with you now lakini kila nashiriki nanyi sasa i'm purposing it to be the theme na kusudia iwe lengo of our month of january and our month of february ya mwezi wa kwanza january na february as much as we have purposed in the year 2024 hata kama tumelenga makusudia katika mwaka 2024 a year when we shall keep the armies of god on the mountain of god throughout the year ambao ni mwaka ambao tutaweka majeshi yetu kwa mlima mwaka mzima but it has been our tradition in the past lakini imekuwa tamaduni yetu tangia pale mwanzo to dedicate january and february kuweka wakfu january na february to be a time for us ningependa lengo ambalo tungetakuwa nalo katika january na february to be the very the very the very message that i'm sharing with you as the lord ushers us to the crossover itakuwa ni ujumbe mbona shiriki hii vile mungu anatuongoza kuvuka mwaka the theme that i desire for january and february is called warfare kwa hivyo lengo la january na february ambayo natamania inaitwa vita i just desire that you cross over as a soldier natamani kwamba uvuke kama askari i just desire that as you jump into the year 2024 I would want you to jump into it as a soldier. Natamani unapovuka mwaka wa 2024 unavuka ukiingia kama askari. Jump into it as a fighter. Urukie kama mpiganaji. Jump into it as somebody who knows this war. Uingie mwaka huo ukijua kwamba kuna vita. And you have to fight this war. Na unatakana upigane vita hivyo. And because God is on your side. Na kwa vile Mungu yuko upande wako. Bible says if God be for us who can be against us. Biblia inauliza je Mungu akiwa pande wetu ni nani atakuwa kinyume chetu? You can lose a battle but you cannot lose a battle when the Lord is on your side. Waweza kupoteza vita lakini hauwezi kupoteza vita Mungu akiwa pande wako. Nobody lost a battle in this history of the world when that person is with the Lord God. Hakuna aliyepoteza vita katika historia Mungu akiwa pande wake. And so I desire that you purpose in your heart. Kwa hivyo natamani ya kwamba ukusudie katika moyo wako that 2024 is my warrior year. Ni mwaka wa 2024 ni mwaka wa ujemedari wangu. Because when the Lord God put us on earth, maana Bwana Mungu alipotuweka hapa duniani, he did not bring you on earth for holiday making. Haukukuleta wewe uende likizo. Earth is not a place for holiday making. Dunia si mahali pa kwenda likizo. It's not a place for honeymoon. Sio mahali pa kwenda fungate. It's a place of war. Ni mahali pa vita. Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 to 17. Ufunuo wa Yohana 12:13 hadi 17. The Bible says when the dragon saw that he had been hurled on earth. Wakati joka liona limetupwa kwenye ulimwengu It's good to know that the dragon was hurled on earth. Ni vizuri kujua kwamba joka limetupwa ulimwenguni. Ibilisi shetani yule muongo muwaji anayekuja kuua, kuiba, kuua na kuharibu, yule mdanganyifu, yule ambaye kazi yake is accusing of the brethren your man the, the name Satan. Alitupwa kwa ardhi hii yenye uko. Ukijua the universe vile iko, earth pale iko penye Mungu alikuumba akakuweka hapo ndipo alitupa na Biblia inaanza kwa kusema hapa ya kwamba when the dragon saw he had been held on earth he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child 
alimfuatilia mwanamke ambaye alikuwa amezaa mwana wa kiume and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for time times and other time na mwanamke akapata mbao mawili ambaye alikuwa anatumia kufuata she was kept out of the snake's reach yeye naye akawekwa mbali asifikiwa na nyoka then from his mouth the snake spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with torrent but the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of the mouth kisha joka naye akatoa maji kutoka mdomoni mwake kama mto lakini naye ulimwengu ukafungua mdomo wake ukameza yale maji ya mto it's a very interesting scripture niandiko ambalo linakustabisha sana but john was shown this in well as he, as he he experienced the revelation moment yohana anaonyeshwa haya wakati anapitia kule kwenye kisima which according to history it's around 95 ad eh uh-huh. ni katika mwaka wa 95 ad it was many years after jesus had died in around 27 ad about 70 years already have elapsed jesus died rose is in heaven and then john gets this experience miaka 70 takriban baada yesu kuzaliwa na kukufa na kuzaandikwa msalabani yohana anapata hii funo actually i started reading from somewhere in the middle but he is shown what is happening Yohana anaonyesha kile kinatendeka He shown the woman having birth pain Anaona mwanamke akiwa katika shown the woman delivering the child Anaona mwanamke akizaa the, the, the child the male child mtoto He shown the dragon ready to destroy the child Anaona joka liko tayari kumharibu mtoto He shown the child taken away Anaona mwana akitolewa kept in a safe place Kisha anaweka mahali palipo salama And the dragon realizes it has been defeated from destroying the child Na joka linagundua lime limezuiwa kuharibu mtoto So the next purpose is to destroy the woman Kwa hivyo makusudi ni kuharibu mwanamke And then pursues the woman Kisha mfuatilia mwanamke but the woman is given the wings kisha mwanamke anapatiwa mabawa she flies into a safe place anapaa kwenda mahali salama but the serpent realizing that this woman is like is is running faster na anaona joka anaona kama mwanamke anamtoroka pews what anamwaga maji kariva kama moto to sweep the woman kama mtu kumfukuza mwanamke earth opens lakini dunia inafungua swallows the water inameza maji and the serpent is frustrated kisha joka linafinyiliwa then the serpent decides now yeah joka basi linaamua something lazima nifanye jambo let me tell you what the what the serpent does waje tuone joka linafanya nini verse 16 says but the earth helped the woman by opening the mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of the mouth nayo inchi kamsaidia mwanamke kwa kufunua kinywa na kumeza mtu ambao ulitolewa na joka verse 17 says and the dragon was enraged at the woman na msara 17 joka likamkasirikia mwanamke and went off to wage war na kaenda naye kupiga vita against the rest of her offspring juu ya uzao wake those who keep god's command wale ambao wanashika amri za Mungu and hold fast their testimony na about kisha, Jesus kisha wanashika ushuhuda wa Yesu Look at what the Bible is telling us. Hebangalia Biblia vile vinatueleza. If you look at this, unapoangalia haya, basically the child is Jesus Christ. Huyo mwana ni Yesu Kristo. That the devil was unable to destroy Jesus. Ambayo Yesu ajoka lilishindwa kumharibu Yesu. Na hiyo ni kitu tunajua zote. Amen. Alizaliwa, akaishi, ibilisi alijaribu mbinu zote zenye anaweza kutumia alijaribu kutumia erodi, alijaribu alijaribu kutumia kifo msalaba chochote chenye alijaribu alishindwa na Yesu alimshinda alipona amemshinda biblia inatuambia aligeukia mwanamke huyu mwanamke ni tu representation inaweza kuwa ni mwanamke nyali mzaa lakini representation nyingine ni kwamba ni kanisa kwa sababu kanisa inachukuliwa kama the, the woman Amen. Yesu anachukua like the man na kanisa inachukua like the woman if you read the whole book of revelation utapata ya kwamba Yesu anachukuliwa kama the man and the church inachukuliwa kama the woman na kanisa haiwezi kushindwa ndio maana unaona hapa inaandikwa ya kwamba na akajaribu kufikia yule mwanamke ajaribu kumharibu akashindwa 
kanisa haiwezi kushindwa. Yesu alinena hiyo akasema and on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Kwa hivyo hiyo ni sealed. It doesn't matter ni nini anaweza kujaribu kutumia. Amen. The church itasimama. Kama ingekuwa tibilisa ngo naweza hata kanisa ingekuwa leo. Lakini kanisa bado imesimama 2000 years baada Yesu kupaa mbinguni. Kanisa bado imesimama na itakaivo mpaka Yesu akirudi atakuja kuinyakua wakati wa the great the rapture. Zote tunaelewa hivyo na itaenda into eternity. Lakini sasa alipoona hawezi kushinda Kristo hawezi kushinda kanisa. Aligeuka ku kuanza kushughulika na uzao wale ambao wanashika ile imani ni wewe na mimi aligeuka kuanza kupigana nao verse 17 says the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war to wage war so it's good to know that it's time for war ni vizuri kujua kama ni wakati wa kupiga vita that in the spiritual realm it has been declared. You might take it in any other perspective in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm it's time for war. And this war is against the devil. That he will always hate you. The reason he hates you is one. That you keep God's commands. We, we, you hold on the testimony about Jesus. Christ. Imeandikwa kama mwenye anajua ni wakati wa vita maisha ya vita na hii maisha nitaishi nikijua niko na yeye before tufika hapa hukule juu hapa tumesoma hizi scriptures za chini lakini kule juu inasema they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony kuna njia ya kushinda sisi tushatangalizwa ushindi lakini ushindi huko ndani ya Kristo Yesu Amen. na ni lazima tujue kupigana vita Amen. And ipo naoma ya kwamba ingia 2024 kijeshi. Amen. Na sisi kama kanisa tuko na responsibility. Mm. Hapa kwa madhabahu, hao wachungaji wa Mungu wako na responsibility. Responsibility ni kwamba Mungu ametupea ukisoma in the book of Acts it must be chapter 2 verse 42 ina, inasema and they and they devoted themselves to the apostles doctrine to prayer to breaking bread and to to fellowship vitu vinne ambavyo vilijenga kanisa ya kwanza kanisa ya kwanza ilijengwa na vitu vinne mm -hmm. one of them is called the apostolic doctrine apostolic doctrine means right teachings Na ni lazima nasi tunajipea jukumu ya kwamba kama watumishi wa Mungu lazima tusimame hapa with the right teachings mafundisho sawa ambazo zinasema ni nini Mungu anataka kwa sababu kuna also false teachings Correct. Na tunaomba tusipatikana kwa false teachings. Tunapatikana the, the right teachings is the word of God being given out and this word of God being given out according to the book of Ephesians this word is the sword of the spirit. Na upanga wa kiroho. So when the word of God comes right wakati upanga uh, uh, wrong, you are being equipped wewe unatiwa in the spiritual realm katika by kiroho. the of the Holy Spirit to be no. able to fight right. Kuenda kupigana sawa. Na naomba Mungu atusaidie. Amen. Kwa sababu Kristo alipigana tu na alitumia neno. Amen. Na bado neno la Mungu liko na uzima, Amen. liko na ushindi. Neno la uzima ni uhai, neno la, 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 la Mungu ni ni, mwa, ni mwangaza, ni nuru, inatuongoza, inatufanyia kila kitu. Ndipo tuko tunapeana kitu inaitwa theme theme ni ya kusaidia kujua ni lazima tufundishe kanisa la Bwana warfare ya kiroho inafanywa namna gani amen na watoto wa Mungu wakiwa equipped with that ni jukumu lao na kusimama kama warriors na kuingia in the battlefield na kupigana vita vya Bwana amen kama haupigani hmm. Some of the Old Testament. 
wakikaa tu hivyo wasipoenda kwa vita walikuwa wanafinyiliwa <coughs> kiona siku za Gideoni walikuwa wamefinyiliwa Gideoni amejificha Mungu anamwambia you are a mighty warrior you are a mighty man of valor arise saa nyingine tunafinyiliwa because tumekataa kwa rais mm. lakini Gideon alipo arise hey mambo ilibadilika amen na ni lazima tujue kwa rais ni lazima tujue kujihami na kusonga kwenye vita walifinyiliwa kule misri musa ameogopa lakini alipo rais na kijiti tu lakini ako na mungu unaweza kuonekana kuna silaha hivi hivi kimu kwa macho ya binadamu ni hivi hivi lakini bora uko na mungu amen utasonga na hiyo silaha amen na utashinda vita. Amen. Watu wa Mungu watatembea kwa ushindi wa Bwana. Amen. Hapa ibilisi amepanga vita na sisi nasi tuko na ushindi dhidi yake kwa jina la Yesu. Amen. Lakini tuko na jukumu la kusema ni lazima nitakubali kujiami na kuingia kwenye 2024 kama askari wa Bwana. Amen. Angalia vile Daudi ananena katika Psalms chapter 18 verse 37. Na naomba haya yenye Daudi ananena Mungu akutendee. Amen. Iwe tu sio Daudi kunena hiyo, lakini wewe pia unene hivyo. Amen. Psalms chapter 18 verse 37 inasema I pursued my enemies and overtook them. Wacha hiyo iwe mwaka ya wewe ku pursue your enemies and overtake them. Amen. I did not turn back until they were destroyed. Hallelujah. Na kwambia askari jeshi mzuri harudingi nyuma mpaka adui ameharibiwa kabisa amen ukisoma kitabu cha Gideon chenye nasema Judges chapter 6 chapter 7 chapter 8 Gideon alipigana vita na aliendelea kufuata adui na hata Biblia inasema alikuwa amechoka sana lakini hakukoma katika hiyo kuchoka bado alisonga mbele amen Mungu akutie nguvu. Amen. Pahali unafika, unapoingia kwenye vita na unafika pahali unaona ni kama una hema, unaona ni kama sasa nguvu zako zinatidimia. Bado jitie nguvu ndani ya Bwana uendelee na vita. Amen. Wanapenda kuambia watu ya kwamba Numbers chapter 32 verse 33 ambayo inaongea mambo makubwa inaongea mambo makubwa kwa sababu wana wa Israeli walipigana vita na wakapata vitu vikubwa vikubwa walipata ufalme wakapata miji wakapata mashamba wakapata maeneo na sisi kama tunataka hizo kama tunataka kutawala maeneo kama tunataka kupata mashamba kama tunataka kupata miji kama tunataka kupata falme kama tunazitaka lazima tuwaige wao wao walipigana vita miaka mitano Sitaki soja ambaye anapigana vita siku mbili na anaanza kuangalia. Hapana. Vita vya Ukraine vilianza recently. Aku, a, a, ziko zinaendelea. Vita ni kitu ya kuendelea. Hakuna vita vinakuanga vya siku mbili tatu. World War was for five years I don't know 1939 to 1945 World War 2. Mm-hmm. Ilichukua five years, six years. Askari wa Yesu ni yule anajua nikianza vita nimeingia. Na sitakoma mpaka wakati Mungu ananionyesha sasa imekwisha. Amen. Paulo alimaliza akisema I fought a good fight. Nimepigana vita vyema. I finished the rest. Nimemaliza mbio. I've kept the faith. Nimeiweka imani. Yesu alimaliza akisema it is finished. Sio kitu ya siku moja. Mhm. Sio kitu ya cheap resolutions 
resolution 2024. Forget about those things. It's a something to focus. It's something to have a vision. Kibaki alikuwa na vision, vision 2030. Ako kwa two or three, lakina anawana 2030. If the people of the world can have wisdom to see far, what about you and me? Who are of the kingdom of God? Yes. Ni lazima tuwe focused. Yes. Na kusema mungu, ni tatembea na wewe. Amen. Sita kupimanisha na one day, two days. Sita kupimanisha na one day, two days. Mungu ni tatembea na wewe. Ibrahim alitembea na, kama Ibrahim angepimanisha mungu na one day, two days, Isaka alipatikana after 25 years. Kupimanisha mungu na one day, two days, you will miss your miracle. Yes. Kama Isaac angepimanisha mungu, alioa kaka 20 years. We must walk with God. Lazima tutembea na mungu. Focused with God. Kimlenga mungu. And ready, walking in faith. Tayari kutembea katika Understanding kuelewa that we have God who mungu. fails not. Ambaya hawezi zimia. Mungu wetu hashindwi. Hata shindwa. Amen. Ineza kuonekana na kama kuna kushindwa. Na kuambia inaweza kuonekana. Lazaro magonjwa yake ilionekana ni kama kuna kushindwa. Inaweza kuonekana ni kama kuna kushindwa. Yes. Lakini yeye hashindwi. Amen. Amebarikiwa ambaya naona ni kama kuna kushindwa na bada na amini. Amen. Bada nasema mungu wangu hashindwi. Mm. Muta na mpata kwa hali ingine lakini bada wako na ushuda. Mm. Anasema mungu wangu hashindwi. Amen. Na sita shindwa. Amen. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with the strength for battle. Yeah. God arms people with strength for battle. God arms people with strength for battle. May the Lord arm you with strength for battle. May the Lord arm you in this 2024 with strength for battle. You humbled my adversaries before me. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight. I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as windblown dust. Hallelujah. Wakawa kama matope chini ya migu yangu katika mabarabara. Haleluya. Uli ni kumboa kutoka kwa vita zao. Walipo ni vamia, uli ni shindia. Amen. Uli ni fanya, ni kafanyika kichwa cha mataifa. God is able to make you the head of the nations. Amen. Look at that. David is the one who is writing that. May you at your own time. Hebu kwa kati wako. Just read Psalms 18 from verse 37. Usome zaburi kumina nane. Kwanzia 37 hada 45. Uone mambo yenye mungu anaweza kufanya. Mungu ambaye anaingia kwa vita na wewe. Anaingia na amesema sita kuwacha peke yako. Sita kuwacha peke yako. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Ataenda na wewe. Muhimu ni kukua na buwana. Amen. Unapo ingia kwa vita, muhimu ni kukua na buwana. Amen. Mimi naomba uende na buwana. Amen. 2024 ingia na buwana. Amen. Ingia ukiwa tayari kwa vita. Ingia ukiwa tayari kuleta tofauti. Amen. Ni kwa sababu vita vili tangazwa. Lakini mungu wetu ni mwema. Alipo vita angaza, alijua ametupea ushindi. Ni imani yetu ambayo inatakikana. Kusonga pale na kuleta utukufu kwa buwana. Amen. Mungu anaweza kutumia kuleta utukufu kwake. Amen. Na naomba Mungu akutumie kila changamoto ambayo inasimama mbele yako. Ni vita ambavyo Muovu ameleta. Kila changamoto inayosimama mbele yako. Ni vita ambavyo Muovu ameleta. Unajua Mungu alipoumba, aliumba kila kitu na akasema and it was good. Zile vitu unaona vikiwa kinyume sio mpango wa Mungu. Ni mpango wa ibilisi anayekuja kuiba, kuwa na kuharibu. Lakini Mungu ametupa ushindi. Amen. Nasi tutembee kwa imani. Tukitembea kama mashujaa wa Yesu. Amen. 
you have made me the head of nations umenifanya kwa kichwa cha mataifa people i did not know what i want to serve me sahi wananitumikia foreigners come before me wageni wanakuja mbele zangu as soon as they hear they obey wanaponisikia wanatii they all lose heart and come trembling wanafadhaika wakitetemeka hiyo yote mungu anaweza amen sio theory Mungu ali challenge Job. Mungu ali challenge Job katika Job chapter 39. Alimchallenge akamwambia, "Wewe unajua farasi?" Na Mungu akaanza kufundisha Job kuhusu farasi. Ukisoma Job chapter 39, utaona Mungu akifundisha Ayubu mambo tofauti tofauti. Akifika verse 19, anaanza kufundisha Ayubu about farasi. Anaanza kumfundisha juu ya farasi. Na anasema angalia farasi. Anasema farasi oh iko na nguvu. Na Mungu ana challenge job. Anasema nana aliumba. Alikuwa ana challenge job akimwambia nana aliumba hizi. Hallelujah. Nana aliziumba. Mungu kama aliumba farasi akaipea nguvu. Nataka kuniambia hata, hata kutia nguvu. Mungu amesema atatutia nguvu. Amen. Farasi iko na nguvu. Amen. Yani nguvu ya farasi ni kubwa mpaka before science ikwe evolve kabisa walikuwa wanamesha power using horses, horse power. Yani nguvu yake ni kubwa sana. Na Mungu alikuwa na challenge Ayubu anasema, kama nilipea farasi nguvu, si mimi naweza kupea nguvu. Amen. Mungu anaonyesha kama nilipea moto nguvu si naweza kupea nguvu. Mm-hmm. Shada kina Mesha kina Bednego walionyeshwa na Mungu ya kwamba kama nilipea moto nguvu ninaweza kupea nguvu inashinda ya moto. Amen. Na Mungu anaweza kutupea nguvu ambayo inashinda kila changamoto ya maisha yetu. Mm-hmm. Ambayo kila kitu kikukuona kinatetemeka. Ndipo unaona katika Zaburi yenye tumesoma they see me and they tremble. Daudi alikiri akasema they see me and they tremble. Wananiona wanatetemeka. Bari ya Shamu iliwaona ikatoroka. Hallelujah. Jordan iliwaona ikasimama. Yes. Mlima Sinai iliwaona ikarukaruka. Kuta za Yeriko ziliwaona zikazama chini. Maadui wetu ni wa kutuona na watetemeke. Simba ziliona Daudi zikanyamaza. Amen. Ni jukumu letu kujua aliyezuumba ndiye ametuumba. Amen. Na aliyopea anaweza kutupea zaidi. Amen. Alipea farasi nguvu atatupea nguvu zaidi. Wale ambao wanajua Ephraim. Ephraim alikuwa ni mwana wa Yosefu. Yosefu alikuwa na wana wawili. Mmoja anaitwa Manase mwingine anaitwa Ephraim. Mzaliwa wa kwanza alikuwa Manase. Mzaliwa wa pili alikuwa Ephraim. Yosefu alipomzaa kama Ephraim, alimpea jina Ephraim. Akimaanisha double blessing. Akimaanisha twice fruitful. Lakini Ephraim akiwa na jina kubwa hata wakati babu yao alikuwa anawabariki unajua babu yao hapo ndiyo alikrosisha mikono sita kufundisha hiyo saa hii mm-hmm. lakini alikrosisha mikono akabariki Ephraim kushinda Manase hata kama Ephraim alikuwa mzaliwa wa mwisho mm-hmm. kwa hivyo Ephraim alikuwa na jina kubwa alikuwa na baraka kubwa na Biblia inatuonya tusikue kama Ephraim Ephraim alikuwa namna gani Psalm 78 verse 9 Biblia inasema wale wa Efraimu wenye silaha wapiga upinde walirudi nyuma siku ya vita usikue kama Efraim mtu wa kurudi nyuma umejihami na usongi mbele umejihami na unarudi nyuma in english it says the men of Efraim though armed with bows turn back on the day of battle mm-hmm. when you turn back on the day of battle naporudi nyuma siku ya vita i have already assured you that this earth here 
kwamba hii dunia hapa you are born into a day of battle umesaliwa siku ya vita and the lord has armed you na bwana amekutia the silaha. lord has armed you bwana amekupatia silaha the way Ephraim was armed the way you have been armed jinsi Ephraim alipatiwa silaha as Ephraim was blessed by Jinsi the crossing of hands alibarikiwa kwa ku Bila Ephraim aliweza kubarikiwa kwa sababu mikono ilifanywa hivi ndivyo msalaba wa Yesu umekupea baraka amen unatembea ndani ya baraka vile alipewa silaha ndivyo umepewa silaha tumepewa jina la Yesu tumepewa damu ya Yesu tumepewa nguvu za roho mtakatifu tumepewa imani silaha kubwa kubwa kwa sababu zimeandikwa katika kitabu cha Waefeso na sasa tumebeba silaha Amen. Tutakuwa wakurudi nyuma. Tutakuwa kutembea na silaha bila kutumia silaha. Who unto him who doesn't use his weapon? Wale wake ambaye hachagua. His weapon from bloodshed. Yule ambaye huweka silaha yake isichuke damu. You must use your weapon. Lazima utumie silaha yako. You must engage in warfare. Lazima uingie vitani. It would have been catastrophic if if Moses went to Egypt with the weapon then he keeps it in the bedroom. Ingekuwa ya kuzunisha kama Musa hangeingia vitani aiweke kwenye chumba. Let us not be like Ephraim. Tusikuwe kama Ephraim. It's time for war. Ni wakati wa vita. It's time for soldiers. Ni wakati wa maskari. It's time for people who know they can wage war. Ni wakati wa watu ambao wanajua nataka nao wapige vita. May the Holy Spirit of God guide you right. Hebu Roho Mungu akuongoze vyema. He's the commander in chief in this. Yeye ni amri jeshi mkuu. He was given to us to guide us, to teach us, to help us. Alitupatiwa sisi atusaidie, atufundishe. May he help you. Wacha kusaidie. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 38 to 14. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. Kisha Sauli akamvalisha Daudi. He put a coat of armor on him. Akamweka koti juu ya and a bronze helmet on his head. Na kisha kofia ya shamba. And David fastened on his sword over the tunic. Kisha Daudi akaweka kisu chake. He tried walking around. Akajaribu kutembea because he was not used to them. Lakini kwa vile hakuwa amezoea. I cannot go in this. Siwezi enda na hizi. He said to Saul. Akamwambia Sauli. Because I'm not used to them. Maana sijazizoea. So he took them off. Kisha kazivua. And verse 40. Na mstari 40. Then he took his staff in his hand. Akachukua fimbo yake mkononi. Chose five smooth stones. Kachagua mawe matano from the stream. Kutoka kwenye mto. Put them in the porch of the shepherd's bag. Kaliweka kwenye mfuko wake. And with the with a sling in his hand. Kisha akiwa na sling mkononi mwake. He approached the Philistine. Akaendea wa Filisti. Naomba utembee kwa baraka za Daudi. Amen. Na naomba utembee kwa hekima ya Daudi. Amen. Daudi hapa penye tunasoma alikuwa na cross over. Alikuwa na cross over. Alikuwa, alikuwa na cross over. Alikuwa navuka. Anatoka pahali penye alikuwa anashuka makondo, anachunga makondo kuingia kwenye pahali pa vita. Amen. Naomba wewe pia kama Daudi chochote kilikuwa kinakushikilia amen usonge kando nacho uingie kwa eneo mpya eneo ya vita amen na kama daudi naomba kama daudi naomba chagua mawe yako tano haleluya sio mungu alichagulia daudi mawe Mm-mm. ni daudi alichagua yes alichagua mawe yake tano Naomba wewe pia uingie kwa 2024 ukiwa umechagua mwenyewe Amen Sio bwana wako sio baba yako sio mama yako sio mke wako sio mme wako sio bishop wako sio pasta wako sio mbloya wako ni wewe ni wewe utachagua. Daudi alienda akachagua mawe tano. Naomba uchague mawe yako tano. Amen. Naomba uingie 2024 na mawe yako tano. Na kama Daudi ukishachagua mawe yako tano umeweka pale 
beba imani amen kuwa na imani amen daudi alikuwa na imani alijua leo ni leo daudi alijua leo ni leo siingizi vita kushindwa na ingia hizi vita kushinda amen your giant must fall adui your giant must fall jitu lazima anguke kilicho jinua Mm-hmm. Kuonekana kama kubwa sana. Mm. Lazima kirudi chini. Amen. Sila ambayo ingekumaliza itakata kichwa cha adui wako. Amen. Sila ambayo ilinunuliwa kinyume na wewe ikapangwa kinyume na wewe. Leo lazima itakata kichwa cha adui wako. Yes. You must possess the head of your enemy. Lazima umiliki kichwa cha adui wako. And you must walk in the victory of the Lord. Lazima utembee katika ushindi wa Bwana. May the Lord bless you. Hebu Bwana akubariki. The Lord uplift you. Hebu Bwana akuinue. The Lord strengthen you. Bwana akutie nguvu. The Lord arm you. Bwana akuvie. The Lord bless your arm. The Lord bless your strength. The Lord bless your steps. The Lord bring down your enemy. The Lord crush your enemy. May you walk in the victory of the Lord. Hallelujah. I desire to stop. Natamani ni kome. At 11:30. Okay. And so I stop there. Yes. And I declare that we need praises to the Lord. Amen. I don't want jokes. I want praises. Mm-hmm. We are praising God who's able to fight for us. Amen. As you are praising the Lord, please believe the Lord. 2024 is the beginning of your great victories amen but you are ready for great warfares amen may we stand on our feet amen. as the praise team give us a time to go before the lord god amen. and praise him and worship him may no liwa zaidi ya milima yote duniani matanda yako makuu ya ajabu yatisha kama nini umeinu